Evening, little Andy back in the cave. Another project for today, something a little bit different, something a bit more maybe interesting. Um, today, I'm going to be working on this. Um, it was a gift to me from someone. Um, it's one of those kind of custom made guns, nobody really knows what it is. 12 gauge shotgun side by side. Um, I have got no intention of ever shooting this gun because I've got no idea what condition it's in, when it was last used, anything like that. It's more of a an ornament. Um, if I want to go shooting, I've got a, a nice bullet a side by side, uh, over and under. And um, the issue that I want to repair on this, so it's operational. Should I ever want to use it? In an emergency you know end of the world zombies taking over and i want a working gun that i'm not my nice gun that i want to lock the barrels off lock the stock off <laughs> make a tiny little shotgun you know when the zombies are knocking at your door in uh, 10 years time you never know it's the kind of end of the world gun which obviously you're never going to do but like i say it would be nice to have this operational should i ever need it um, the problem is, the way this gun works, it's got a tiny little, you know, side by side lock. There's a little doodad there, which the pin, oh, it's tight on this one, slides out. Uh, it's pushed back by the percussion cap, pull the hammer, snaps forward, hits the percussion cap, sends the cartridge away. However, as you may see, the second one is missing so this could only ever fire the right hand barrel so what we're going to try and do is as we have one here see if we can there we go pin pops out hammer comes that strikes that pin forward knocks it on the inside just here strike the percussion cap um take this one out have a look see how it's made see if we can't copy it and make a new one so first things first, let's see if we can get this one out. Uh, I know we're going to get a socket on there, we may get a spanner. Um, it would be nice to think I had a mind to use a, come a bit closer, a basically a, a bolt, what it looks like. Turn the inside out, make a pin, jobs are good. Enough. But chances are, this gun is probably so old that it is more than likely not metric. It's probably imperial, in which case we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Never know, it might be metric. 7mm is the size of the socket, so that's a 7mm. Kind of fits, not perfectly. Now it looks like it's a little bit marred and chewed, but I don't want to damage it any more than it already is. It sort of fits. It's already not very tight. It's kind of turning but binding, turning but binding. I'll just get this on. Combination of that and a shifter. Let's get that to start it that way. And then another turn like that sort of finger tight but not quite maybe a little bit of a wiggle out. Come in closer. Let's see what's going on here. Sorry about that. That's a mystical tour. Try not to make everybody sick. Right, so come over the top here. Let's have a look. That's better. How's that look? Now you can see what's happening. Lovely. See, it's kind of got a little, you know, it's binding there. 
just a little bit of a rock in it and then it seems to bind up. There we go, a little bit of a turn and then I can't get the spanner in. Let's see, I can't get a socket in because this is in the way. This is spring loaded. So I don't really want to start taking this plate off the side and having springs pinging all over the place and put my eye out, if I can avoid it. And basically, oh, there we go, that feels a bit better. Oh, yep, yeah, we're there. No, and it stopped again. How long is this thread? How long does it need to be? That's not touching it. Come on. There we go. A little bit more. Let's see, it's not tight, it's just too tight for my fingers. It hasn't got much clearance around it. It's obviously been installed by, I don't know, maybe a very skinny socket before this hammer assembly and spring plate was installed. Well, there we go. Just keeps going. Oh, hang on. Now we're loose. There we go. Doesn't look like it's the straightest pit in the world. I don't know if it's been bent through use or it's just badly made but that's basically it so essentially it is basically a little bolt drilled through with a pin so pin looks like it's easy enough to make this tip of the pin is mushroomed over I don't obviously it stops it from coming out I don't know if that's designed in and mushroomed to stop you losing the pin I suppose it would have to to stop it from disappearing down the side of the barrel or if it's mushroomed through use but yeah it's got to be mushroomed otherwise if you close the gun with no cartridge in that would just drop down the barrel and fall out so yes so first things first see what this thread is it might be metric we might be lucky so let's find out the major diameter first and see what that is it's coming up to just under 7 mil, which means it's not metric because if, ooh, actually would it? Could have been M7, what's the major data? M7, 7 mil, just shy 7, it might be metric. We'll get some thread gauges, we'll see. The metric, I think, have I got the right ones? Yep, metric thread. It's not going to be any of those big ones. So let's start. Too fine, definitely too fine. Just holding up the light and see if I can see any gaps. Now 0.5. Close to 0.75, but it doesn't really. Not really. Oh, 0.8. Oh. 0.8 fits nicely. Uh, we'll have a look at some imperial ones and see if anything. Maybe they're all too coarse. Too fine. Where are we? And back to metrics. So here we go. Start with that. Too fine. Too fine. Not thirty six. Thirty. Two, very close. Maybe thirty-two, just badly formed. 
30 threads, so it's either 30 TPI or 0 0.8 and a 7 mil. What's the imperial equivalent of 7 mil? So it could be 5.30 seconds on thread at a 32 TPI or it could be an M7 0.8 thread which is very very unusual. Just bear with me, I'm seeing if I've even got an M7 tap. I have an M7. But it's a one mil. It would be nice if I had an M7.8 just to see if it fits in that hole. But to be fair, I don't think M7 0 0.8 is such a thing. Um, I could be wrong. Correct me if I am. I think what I'm going to do is actually come back down. We'll see what we're doing. Get this out of the way and we'll move it over here. So this is all we're bothered about is this, get a bolt, let's see what we've got close. Right, probably an M8 bolt, and then turn it down. So that looks like an M8, turn it down, no M6, not even close. Um, do, 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 eight and ten, something like that. There we go. There we go. Is an M8 bolt. Turn that down. I mean, head's too big, but we could machine that down. It's a little bit shallow. Um. Could use that. We can. Is that an M8? Isn't it? Yeah, M8. And my minor diameter is oh, that six, six and a half, which is a bit shy. So maybe we need to use an M10 and machine that down. But the head of an M10 is. Enormous, so I would have to machine that down. Could I get away with that? What we're talking about here? Yeah. Six point nine zero. Is this? Yeah. Seven. Six point nine eight. Six point nine five. Main diameter. Six point. 6.5 is 6, 79.3, 0.1, 0.1 of a mil either side. Might be a little bit rattly in the hole, but it would be nice. And then I could reuse that. Obviously, that's black and square, but to be fair, there's less work involved in that. And I could, if it's successful and it fits and it looks nice, I'll make two of these. Said that, we're gonna. Hmm. Or oh, do I start from scratch? The bar stock. And make the whole thing from scratch. Maybe that's an idea. Um. Just not stainless it's got some crappy corrosion on it um, what's a girl to do the decisions with a sensible head does such a thing exist 
Probably not. Why would you want an M8 screw where the head is so tiny? I think we're making this from scratch. Okie dokie. Right then. So where do I want to start? We need something with a bit of 10 mil bar. Scabby bit of metal. Let's start with that. Lop a, do I want to lop a lump off? Do I want to keep it? I want to basically need to work on that. How are we going to grip it? Do I part it off? So we'll face that off. We'll cut the threads up to the, up to the shoulder. We'll be left with that, and if I then part it off to machine that, how am I going to grip that tiny little thing to machine those flats without marring the threads? So, how's about machine the threads, drill the hole, leave it on the bar stock, I'll then chuck, got something up here to clamp it down on, maybe in a collet we can machine the flats on, and then lop it off to length I think is the way to go so if we nick that off and we'll just use that it's more enough to play with little lump to play with. Right, I hear you cry. Andy, Andy, how on earth have you got the change gears to machine uh, what we're going for? A, a 530 seconds, 30 threads per inch thread, I hear you say. Well, first of all, I hate working on Imperial, so I'll be turning the major diameter down to 6.9493 and the actual threading procedure. Let's, uh, well, let's have a look. So we can see what we're doing. Back to our cheeky friend, the lathe here. Let's get the basic stuff out of the way first. I want that. I want to have a look at that, see what we're doing. And that will lump the metal, stick it in there. What does that do? I need a bit of do. I want a bit to play with. Bit to work on. See, we're threading up to our shoulder as well. It's generally sucks. Uh, oh, we need a 55 degree threading tool, which we do. Should be sharp because <laughs> I never use it. Oh, hang on, is that chipped? Or is that alright? Is that chipped or is that okay? That's a 60 degree. We don't want 60 degree, we want 55. Have we got 55? Have we got 55? I believe that. Yes, I 
55 degrees. Russell, Russell in the background. Russell, Russell. 55 degree threading tool with the wax still on. So I know it's sharp. Right, I can get rid of this thing, which is rubbish anyway. Right, that in. Uh, I keys. This little monkey foot. Bye. What's the chances of being the same? Oh. What's the chance of the tool height being the same? Uh, zero. Okay, reset the tool height on this hole now. Don't need a lot of stick out. Right there. Make sure it's nice and square. Well, I guess we're going to see how to set the tool height as well. Every day is a school day. Back off the lock nut that I've got in there. So, where is my setting bar? Oh, back out here. Need this little gadget stuck in. There's other ways of setting tool height. This way is, oh, I'll tell you what we need to do. We need to check. I'll, if you want one of these, it's edge technology. I'll not bother going into how to set it. Just have a look. Yep, that's fine. Edge technology, center height, tool height finder thing. Look it up. They've got videos of how it works, how to use it. It's a cool little gadget. Right. Slacken this off a little bit, let it rotate. Drop the height down and off it. So we'll get a bubble in the center. It's all good there. Look at the screw because I don't want it to move. Alright, get rid of that. Pull up. Done. Easy as that. I love my gadgets. Right, so that's set. Stick out, crank that in, but we don't want this right now because first of all, we need to face off, clean it up. Better juice. Right, so. and flat. Can you see what's going on here? Maybe. Now, where do you want to be? Over the top? Where can you see that? How does that look? See what's going on? Right. We shall take this out. Uh, we shall put a wee chamfer on the end. Now you're in my way. Pull this out. There we go. Yep, now we do it there. Right, a little bit of a chamfer, not much. Because it's only a weeny thread, so we'll put a big chamfer on. I'm not going to have any thread left. So, single point threading. 
That jobby that everybody hates. How are we going to cut an imperial thread on a machine which has got a metric lead screw and certain change gears, as you'll know, on a Boxford BUD? Well, answer to that is Clow42, or I have to give him credit for it, electronic lead screw. which I built and installed. So basically with this, the lead screw is not connected via the standard change gears. I've got a rotary encoder attached to the, the main spindle, which reads the revolutions, and then a hybrid stepper motor driving the lead screw. So as the spindle turns, measures the RPM, matches the lead screw. The advantage of this is that I can digitally change the feed speed on the fly while it's moving, but I can change the threads and do any metric thread, all the standard ones and every unusual one in between, 0.8 if I wanted to, one all the way up, or I can flick it over to threads per inch and choose to thread imperial threads. So we're going to go today 20 and 32. Ah, I went to 30. Okay then, I can see a flaw in my programming. I will at some point add um, 30 threads per inch into this. In the meantime, as 0.8 looked the same, let's go for a metric 0.8 on an imperial outside diameter and uh, see if it fits. Having said that, before I stick my threading tool in, I need to cut the, out the major diameter, I don't I? So, back out with this one for the time being. Back in with this one. We shall set our zero on the Y. There I'll just touch off there so we know how far we want to go. We and what are we aiming for? 6.9 I believe. 6.94. So if we we're going to go for feed for the time being. Well, I'll just be doing this manual. One thing I do want to know is how far I'm going. So we want to go down by 5.8. Well, you can see, do you want to have a look at our DRO so you can, can you see the DRO there? And the, I'm doing it so slow. Mike 
I know everybody's shouting, you can't measure anything. You're using calipers, blah, blah, blah. That's not very accurate. Why aren't you doing it properly? I don't know, because I want to do it really fast. Yeah, that's still zero. <laughs> We are sitting at, where is it, where's my tag, there it is, so, there's my nine, no it's not quite nine, it is nine, so we have got nine point one six, X is 9.16 Enter and There we go, we know what we're doing there now And now we need to take it to What did I say? It was 6.9 Oh Just to sanity check since I've done a few passes, see if the calipers match what it says in the DRO 755. So I have got here, if I can take it off without moving this, let's move a bit higher. 7.55 and I've got 7.53. Pretty close calipers, you know, happy with that. Keep going. Okay, right. Oh, you couldn't just realise you couldn't see uh, all the stuff I was doing. You're just watching a DRO. It's not very interesting, is it? So, here we are. We've got a uh, major OD there. Move that so I don't drop it and break them. Set. So now, single point threading. Yay, my favourite. No, it's not. Especially not when it's only. What was it? 5.8 less than six mil of threading so i know a lot of people do this in reverse threading tool upside down work away from the stock mm, we could but with this machine the chuck is actually threaded on so run it in reverse there's a chance of it unwinding 
I'm machining it the tiniest thread in the world, so the chance of that is very minute. But my tool heights are set. We're gonna go normal. We'll just have to try and stop it in time before the tool mashes itself at the side and all hell breaks loose and we're all doomed. Obviously, because of the point there, we can't thread right up to the shoulder. So, we're still going to have to stop a little bit short. The question is, what is our inside? How deep is our cut? It looks pretty goddamn shallow. Hmm. I would say, because it doesn't go up the shoulder, so I can't measure that. And I'm going to go, if I need the mini fetch on them, if I can get it into the groove. Hold the light, am I in? Am I in? I'm not in. I think, because I don't really want to take it out of the machine. Because the problem I've got, I'm, I'm running a three jaw chuck. So concentricity is fine when you're doing a full process. If I cut the thread on this, took this bar out of the machine to test it on the, the hole, and I need to take more off, when I put it back in, the chance of lining that thread up with the cutting tool is small and awkward. And the next issue is using a three jaw chuck that I can't move. Maybe I should go for a four jaw, too late now. A uh, three jaw chuck is that chances are that you've got a little bit of movement, so the concentricity of it will be out a little bit. So even if I did get the threads lined up with the cutting tool, um, which isn't going to happen, that it'll be running probably out of concentricity, so I wouldn't get a nice clean thread. So I need to basically do this in one shot without taking it out of the machine to test it. Um, how am I gonna, and I, this, normally a thread would run off into a shoulder so I could measure the minor diameter. If I knew what thread it was, I could look at a chart and it would tell me, but it, it's vague at best. So the threads are too fine to get the blades of the calipers down inside. So I think what I'm going to have to do is what's known as best guess and assume and I'm going to make these pi i and I reckon the depth of them I'm going to make them 0.6 mil. Worst case scenario, I think it's a little bit less than that. Worst case scenario, it's going to be a little bit slack in the hole, but I'd rather it marginally slack than too tight. Because if it's too tight, we're not good. We've got to start again, which wouldn't be the end of the world. At least the node would have something to go off and go, it's too tight. Next one will make a little bit slacker. If I make it ever so slightly slacker, because I've got such a large flange that it's buttoned up to and seating on, that's what's going to, you know, once it seats onto that, it'll make a nice positive thread, uh, a seat. It'll be, I think we'll be all good. We we'll can but try. Uh, so let's see what happens. So if I'm making that, so if we take our first pass, uh, so where are we going to go? We're going to start over here. We're going to zero it out. I'm just going to touch on. So we are now going into, oh, you can see everything, we're going into thread mode, we're going to go for the 0.8 metric, let's find out if it works, we'll start back here, we're going to do it in, it's a pretty fine thread, I reckon two passes we'll probably get it, 
might need a third. We'll engage our half nut here. And if I go, let's go 0.25. Knock our speed down. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'm going to take it further away and we'll see what it looks like on the approach. And if we need to, we'll do it a bit slower. As the slower we go, the easier I can stop it. In fact, I'm going to risk blocking you. I'm going to come over here because I need to see, be able to see what it's when it's about to smash itself to bits and stop the machine. So here it's coming, where and do, 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 do excitement. Good thing about this is on the fly, say I'm not threading yet, on the fly I can do this. Uh, I can start it, I can adjust the speed, faster, slower, I can reverse still have it indexing on the fly change the threading speed I don't know why you'd want to um, cut multiple pictures of thread on the same yeah, shaft but should I want to I can uh, change that back to 0.8 before we kill it illusion. Here we go. Let's see. Let's slow that thing. Just caught it there. We're not going to get right on the shoulder. So 0.23. We'll leave the half nut engaged because we want to know where it is. We'll have 0.2. We'll back this out. Reverse it back up. We'll take it back in to we will go 0.5, I think we'll be alright at And off we'll go again. Slow down a bit more. Just got it there. Yeah, it definitely needs to be deeper than that. We'll bring this back. Take it back in to. I want to be aiming for 1.2, which will give us the 0.6s per side. We'll go again. I'm just going to slow it down a little bit more. Back it off. Reverse it out. Okay, maybe I was wrong. A bit more than three passes. Uh, but slowly, slowly, catchy monkey, uh, some, some, something to do with monkeys and catching them. Uh, I don't know why you want to catch a monkey. I suppose if you are some kind of monkey, um, like biologist, and you wanted to investigate them and uh, dissect them, or you know, just work out who, then I suppose those people might catch, want to catch a monkey. But in the grand scheme of things, the world, there's probably quite a very small number of people who want to or need to catch a monkey. But anyway, if you did, you've got to do it slowly, apparently. So maybe it is a little bit more than 0.6. What I might do for this last pass is probably what I should have done for the previous many passes. It is a bit of goddamn cutting fluid. So where was 1.2? Let's go. 1.4, which will give us 0.7 a side. And what we'll do is we'll eyeball it and compare it to the original part. Let's see if we're anywhere near. Mm, cutting fluid. It's the future. 
fuck that up. Out of the way. Let's see what we got. Bad little thread. Ooh, fits together, so it looks promising. Depth wise, let's have a look. I think we need to go a wee bit deeper. Oh, hang on a minute. Well, right, okay then. It would appear, even though I've done the tiniest little cuts, I've lost the tip of my threading tool. Cutting fluid. Definitely the future. Right, so before oh, this changes everything, uh, uh, I don't think I've got another one. I'm pretty sure I don't have another one. Internal thread, that's no good. What's this thing? Not looking good. Carbide insert tools. That's the future. Which is what I use when I use met do metric threads. Even though I'm, well, I am cutting. I'm using an imperial cutter, <laughs> 55 degrees, to cut a metric thread on an imperial diameter uh, bar. Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. Uh, so, options now is... You see, I can regrind that, but if I'm off center slightly, I'm going to destroy the threads I've already cut. Um, I can do it without changing the height, that's fine. Or uh, scrap that piece, lop it off, start again, and use the, the, the metric threading tool. It does mean. I would actually be able to get a little bit closer at the shoulder as well. Or, before I go nuts, take this out, try it on the hole, and see if we're anywhere near. And if we're not, we'll start again. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. Let's see how close we are. It's not the end of the world. It's not like I've been working on this part for the last four hours. It's only cutting a small outside die out there and chucking a few threads on. Let's have a look. Oh, I can't get it on because there's a fucking thing in the way. So, what do I need to chuck? I just lock that off there. I don't need it so a gargantuan. So, if I cut that off there, it should still give us a little bit to play with. To mark it. Oops. Throw a pencil on the floor. Cut it off. Cut it off there. So background is me changing the battery on my band so. sound you probably should be hearing in the background is me changing the blade on my bandsaw. <laughs> right, yeah, 
That should give us enough to work with. Is it fit? Oh, you know what it is? You know, it's still too long because there's shit in the way, but you know what it is? <laughs> it fits. It screws in. Would you, Adam and Eve it? Right. So, now we're going to chuck it in, back in, and we'll uh, stick a hole down the centre. Come back. It'll take a little bit longer than, but, you know, you get the, get the idea. Don't need this guy anymore. Bit of peace and quiet. So, what size hole are we going for today? Well, that looks like that's got a shoulder in there. So, that hole is bigger than that hole. Does it need to be? Is there another way? So, basically, this hole at the front is massive and floppy and got like no tolerance well it, it is a tolerance it's just a particularly large one the hole at the back is smaller so obviously this pin has got a step in it to stop it from disappearing that way so it's being inserted from this side and then the mushroom head rounded over so it's captive if you will so we can recreate that so we'll drill a hole that size of that pin but bigger <laughs> um, as far as the the front thread we'll do do a small actually no we'll go all the way through with the smaller hole and then we'll widen up the front that's an easier way of doing it that's so what we got there is three the pin is 3.2 the hole is bigger let's go three point four because obviously three point four is my favorite number but before we do anything like that let's go center drill now we got a small one really small really really small uh, just to use the tip of this one yep sharp in the shopping list next indexable carbide imperial 55 degree thread and tool definitely or is it i mean how often do i cut an imperial thread today uh, the chances are 100 percent apparently Point four. It's, uh, it's one of my favourite numbers. Eight. Lube, bit of cutting fluid, odd size drills with uh, looking after. Can I come around here and see what's happening? There's tools in the way. There we go. Just taking it 
nice and easy because I don't want it wandering and drifting off and coming out at a 45 degree angle out the side, which would be unfortunate. same as uh, flying to an asteroid which is impending and causing the total extinction event on the Earth and then having to drill that said asteroid with a hole deep enough to drop in a nuke to split it in half so it's, this is the Earth. 3.4 mil hole in a, an inch long steel bar. It's, it's quite similar. Obviously, other than the space bit, asteroid bit, size of the hole, depth of the hole, nuclear warhead, uh, total extinction event. Other than those few things, this is exactly the same. Can't be far away. Mr. 3.3. It's not 3.3, it's 3.4. Oh, 0.1 makes a little difference. Uh, where's my little do that? The, there it is. So, how big's the big hole? So, the pin is. Oh, I've machined the wrong side. Oh, no, that's the, that's the small side. It's that side I want. So, the big side is 4.2. And the large hole, which looks like it's been mashed through massively. I don't know if the hugeness is intentional, so it's got lots of wiggle room and slop about, so it's not going to jam. Or if it's just been made really, really, really shit. It looks like it's 5.4. 5.3, should we go 5.3? Which is still gargantuan compared to the pin. Let's go 5.3. Is it really 5.3? That looks massive. Mahoosive. Let's double check again. Sanity check. Measure it more than once and then hopefully you don't have to do it again. As, uh, I think it's the same. Don't, don't do something more times than 
once when you don't have to measure something two times. Yeah. Uh, anyway, depth of penetration. We'll go just past the threads and then if we'll go to that little shouldery bit, we'll go 6.3. Again, I don't think it's enormously critical because we can make our pin to shoot. So, 6.3. How are we going to measure this? I hear you say. I don't know. There's a couple of ways I could set up a six by there's graduations on the tailstock but they're quite far apart and 6.3 isn't a number that you could easily do i could mount this on here and use the digital caliper as it goes but to be fair like i say 6.3 is kind of what i'm aiming for but it's not hypercritical so i think i'm gonna go old school because we're not going to be super accurate and this tape's a bit cold in this one I wish it would be nice to have a DRO on the uh, tail stock that would be nice wouldn't it I haven't got one of them. Maybe one day we'll go 6.3 if I lock that in and we'll go from just after the flutes. Sorry, the flute, the um, the taper point. And we'll put that there. See, it's doing this saying 6.3. You can't do that and measure that 0.3 of a millimeter accurately. Um, I reckon where. Oh, Oh, I've missed that, haven't I? Is that the root? Where are we? Where's the start of the You're right, I can't. It's nowhere near. Start again. Come further forward. it again. And now I'm going to lose the stick of this crappy bit of Sparty's tape. Come further over again. A little close. Where are we? Let's actually measure where I am. See if it's with... Right, so I'm caught to that. I'm 6.4. And if I just stop just shy of that tape, damn well good enough for me. Wander off so badly. What happened there? Let's try that one again. ordinary Sparky's tape. This is a um, vernier calibrated Sparky's tape. Literally no expense spent. Um, there we go. So we'll finish this operation there. Now, look at that. It's beautiful, isn't it? Can you see in there? Where's the... Ooh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, so do I need to turn the back of that down or is it just going to be machined flats? I reckon we could just machine the flats on that. What I might do is I'm going to, just so I don't have anything crappy bit sticking out, I am going to 
pay something back in for no other reason. Super pretty. Yeah. Where's that doodad gun? Is that it? Oh, you don't know. That's... Oh, I swapped it for that one, didn't I? You crazy coconut. So, at some point, when I was talking to you before, the battery died. Um, nothing exciting has happened. Uh, I think what I was happening, as I was showing you, little doodad. So now what we're going to do is we're going to machine the little hex top on to this. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to use that and a 10 mil should be the right one. Now chuck this into a hex collet block. What I should have done is left that longer so I had more to chuck onto. I don't want to put that in there, so we're going to have to be really accurate. And hopefully, oh, lazy. The, a milling cutter, thin enough and long enough to reach down there past all the sheet. So, we can use, well, let's just clamp it in while we get this monkey tightened up. Because we don't want it moving, do we? Just nip it up a little bit. Yep, yeah, I think moving. Maybe we'll stick that. Hang it up there. Magnets future. We're going to use, can you see what's going on there? Let's move you around a bit. So now we're chucked into a colour block. We're basically we're going to machine across the top there. We'll put a flat. We can then rotate it. Rotate it, do the same. We'll keep doing that. Work the way around on all six sides. Give us a hex again. Now we'll start with the second thing we can use to make sure in the same place. We can use the edge of this. As a nice definite stop. Crank that into there. Nice long melon cutter to miss that. Let's see what we've got. That'll do it. Yeah, we're gonna be coming across there. I think I might have said that before. I'll get the wire out of the way. So, the size of that hex was 7mm, which means, and we'll start with 10, so we need to take uh, 7 across the flats. 10 across the flats, 3 mils, so I want to take a mil and a half of each cut. Excuse me, I'll get some power on. Can you see what's happening? A little bit of light. Is that better? Beautiful. So, we need to bring this over. Now we've got a little shoulder, which again isn't hypercritical, but what they're missing there is 2.3. Bring that down a bit. There. If 
quindi lock that off okay let's scry so we know we'll take a little bit of my mark so we know what we're missing oh that's got a round bit i think i might go a little bit narrower and go up to the shoulder on that one do i want to leave it yeah i think we do i think it'll look a bit neater rather than leaving a big flange which that is a mill oh, 1.05 to be exact Let's go with, do I want that? What am I going to leave? Oh, let's split the difference. Let's go one and a half. Again, this is not functional, this is more aesthetic. So we're now putting that extra little curve on, trying to make it look at least a bit similar to the existing part. Put that down. Where are we going? Just there. Right, so that's where we're going there. We're not going left and right, so we can lock this in place to take out any slack and we got it in. And then we're gonna to touch off, get the depth, set it to one and a half mil because I don't think one and a half mil is excessive to take off in a single pass. I don't think if we take it nice and slow. Yeah, let's check that. So we'll start this. Touch it there. And if we set our zero Z height, maybe one and a half. Maybe we'll do it. We're getting to one and a half, but we're going to do it in a few passes. So let's try moving up by half a mil. Why not? A little bit lube. One and a half would have been too much. Where's my end, little blunt? There's this material made out of some kind of ink and L steel. Let's drop it back to point two. in some way. I lost the tip. Corner and edge. So we go for an alternate cutter. Sounds about we go for something a bit more angry. Right, let's start again. We won't have a reference point on that one, so drop it down. We'll come back to that face and we'll rotate it. And we will go for a different cutter. Let's see if we have more success. Get this one out and we'll see what's wrong with it. What's wrong with this? Hmm. Yeah, tips are going on that. Can you okay for facing something off the ribs? The edges look nice and sharp, but that tip looks 
bad. Inside cut. I'll go for a nice curl bag ripper. That'll get the job done. So, we will have to redo this bit. Get it in the right place. Put my square little mark again. Up here, have we got enough space to get this in? Unlock that so I can move it. That'll be close. No, but we're still. Yeah, boodles. Plenty of space. Back, back, back up again. Right. Back to zero with it. Just touch off. Zero. One past. Let's try point four. That's better. No sweat. Five. Take a half off. Uh, uh, 1.2, we'll do a nice final, small final pass. Take it up there, 1.5. Done, and we'll just rotate it, set it back in, draw a stop, and repeat. Draw it back down to point forward. So, at some point during that last machining process where I was milling the flats on, the battery died. Uh, so I spent a little while talking to myself uh, before I realised uh, and finished. So we've got a little hex cut onto it. You can see where we're going now, matching up to that. You can see that, looking quite reasonable. So all we need to do is lop that off there, put a little chamfer on the end just to knit it up. And then once we're doing that, it'll be short enough to find do a final test fit to see if it still screws in and if it does then we've got the uh, the little pin to make so I shall lop that off now since you're on charge hopefully the battery will survive you can uh, stay there oh, turn that off simple part off process nothing particularly exciting so use a hacksaw and again measure this from there see where we need to go nope, just bring it out a little bit more Thank you. 
always a good idea to cut through, especially Clean up that front face. Oh, it comes up nicely. What I might do, clean up my hand with a little bit of a deeper. Clean that up there. Around the back. And. There we go. Pin. Pretty much there. Now the uh, moment of truth I might do. Soften up those edges later. There's no point in wasting my time on this if it don't fit. I'm gonna see with me. Because I'm sure you're just as excited as I am. Cross front. Is it going to fit? Is it going to fit? Is it going to go in more than two threads? What's it hitting? Is it hitting anything? Is that so? Well, that's one thing I didn't take into account. So, this shoulder that I've left on is bigger than that one and it's fouling on the edge of the gun that's an easy fix and it's straight in the way of Let's see where we are going to. Top. 
bumpers. So it just might well, just be outside there of the original bar. You want it neat to be, please. Oh, not much. Thank you, Paul. Just a tickle. Just a tickle. clearance there and hopefully the thread fits find a little bit there is that a bit of shit on my threads let's ease it gently this one see if it fits so my spanner should fit yes it does yeah, it's going it's just no, is the other one uh, going? No, I didn't go on. There's just no bleeding room. It is going, and it's not. It's a snug fit. But it's not tight, so I think we're all good. Not necessarily have to wind it all the way in. Why is that smaller than what the seven mm should be? It does go. It is winding in, it's not binding up. It's uh, awkward to get in, so I'm going to call that a win. I'm going to take that out and we'll make the pin. And then once we've done the pin and got that set, now we can screw it in. Seat at home. Bob, you don't go. Susan. Is your aunt, I do believe. They just don't give you much space to do stuff on this, do you? You think these guns are some kind of precision made? Where do we go? There we go. I might soften that with a little bit of... Just clean the threads a little bit. Might even attack it with a wire wheel. Just to tickle it. We can there, uh, and we can blacken it. <laughs> to be fair, I could blacken it there. To be fair, because that's done. No, no more machining process. So, The file over oh, those edges just to take the sharpness, just to soften those corners just a little bit. Just don't want to scratch my delicate hands, do we?
just uh, sticking with the um, gunsmith's theme where everything's just hand finished to whittled and fitted to perfection it's, it's not like these guns were spat out on a CNC machine everything was kind of hand machined and hand finished to fit to uh, account for any variation in mist tolerances. I'm just soften, just softening the uh, the corners of the machine where it's being machined. Just to, that's not a, it's not an angry. Right, first of all, we need. Give it a little swish in some IPA to get rid of any cutting fluid and finger greases and anything else we don't want on there. Some space. Give that a good swish, 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 should be nice and clean, and then, now we've got a rubber glove on, not to protect my hand, but stop me getting any grease, greasy fingerprints on the part. in this is like a cold blue solution uh, black and steel it's like a forced oxide layer which chemically oxidizes it but with a, an oxidation layer that actually prevents it from oxidizing further i.e. rusting. Come on, let's see, let's move the gun out of the way so we don't rub onto that because we don't want to do that. See how it's now going back, nice and even. Um, you've got to really degrease parts before you do this because any fingerprints or grease marks on it stops the cool blue getting to it and then you get like a patchy finish so cleanliness is next to bobbliness there we go perfect happy with that what I might do is when I finished it I'll the original one I'll blacken that one as well but that obviously needs all cleaning and degreasing so we're going to leave that there and I'll comb back soon which will be in just a moment for you but a couple of days for me when I get bothered and come back and we shall machine the pin to go inside there we go original dropped it 
New one. I can't see that because contrast. Contrast is is your friend. All good. Nearly there. Good luck. We'll have that sorted soon. Right. I'll see you in a bit. See you shortly. Okay, we're back. Uh, while you were away, I went ahead and uh, I know it's going to annoy you, but I made the little pin to go inside. Um, turning very thin things like that is a pain in the butt because you tend to find that as the tool comes in, the metal just wants to deflect and bend out the ray rather than cut. So we got there. Grinding would be the best way to make something small like that, um, but I don't have a spindle grinder for the lathe. Maybe in the future I'll make some an attachment, but in the meantime, we managed. Um, there's the blackened piece, so fits inside. Obviously, that way around. Sits, goes up to the stop. Uh, and that works. We just need to pin over the back to stop it from dropping out. And then we're pretty much done. Uh, made out of a four mil stainless rod that I found. One thing I did notice uh, before I've peened it over, I just happened to be mucking about and just checking to see what the fit was like in the actual gun. So to do so, um, I was just having a look in where the, the original one went down uh, and where the new one's going. And I put the in the pin out of the uh, before I pinned it, and it didn't fit. Yet it did fit on the original side. So I got some pin gauges and checked it. And I was telling you about these are handmade to rough tolerances. The the hole on either side are completely different. Well, I say completely different. On the right hand side, the original is three point two mil, and on the one on the left is two point eight. So obviously I made the pin to match the existing one and it doesn't fit in this side. Uh, I'm just very glad that I checked the fit before I set it in here and pinned over the end because once it was set in there, I wouldn't be able to clamp it in the, uh, the lathe and take any more off. So I would have basically either had to grind it off and cut it out and start again. So let's pin it over, do the last little operation. And what we're going to do, if you come over here, it's nothing particularly exciting or complicated. We're going to set it up in here. I need those. Just hold the pin in there tightly, but I don't want to crush the pin at the bottom and deform it. Get a bit of heat on the tip. And we want to try and heat just the tip and we want to mushroom the top but we don't want to end up with a gentle slope and just misshapen it because if it's on a gentle taper like that it'll go down on a wedge so we want a kind of a, a mushroom and a flat top so it comes down and stops.
little bit. And we'll just give it a little test and see if we need a bit more. Just catching it, but I can see a gap, so I'm going to see a little bit more. of force. Move the metal, we'll give that a little lovely. Right, come and have a closer look if you can see it. Can we do a zoom? Not one of maybe you can. Uh, focus on there and so we've got just a slight mushroom down which stops oh we've now got a, a captive pin. Last thing is getting it into the uh, Weapon. We'll cool this down. Cool it down a little bit of oil, I think. Well, that's uh, cooling down. We can we'll put the original part back in. And by the time we've done that, yeah, our new one will be cool enough to put in. So the original one, obviously, they're now handed. The original won't go in the left-hand hole. And I dare say the, the new part will go, well, there it is, will go on the right. But it'll be rotting around like a wizard's sleeve. See, I mentioned I might at some point pop this one back out and and blacken the the nut part of it to to match. But let's uh, let's just get it in, make sure everything seats and looks as it should. It's quite it's sort of loose, but. Not loose, it's a horrible thread. I guess they obviously had the same issues as me and they've, this thread, I'm guessing there's a, <laughs> is an imperial thread cut with on a metric <laughs> system. That's how they used to make these guns back in the day. Uh, there was a crossover between <laughs> metric and uh, imperial. So one used to, do a bit of both. Obviously, luckily, I've had the, got the equipment to do such a thing because it would be ridiculous to uh, to cut an imperial pitch on an imperial thread. Is that put it up? There's a little bit of a gap at the bottom, but it feels like it's just it stopped there. Maybe that's the end as far as it goes. Again, if I can say it's a, oh no, just, uh, just a little bit more. I think that's probably where it was when I took it out, which is why I felt a little bit loose. I think it's hasn't been seated properly for some time. There's probably just a bit of crap. There we go. Crap at the bottom of those threads. So that's the. Uh, Seems a bit tight that. Now I did notice that the original pin seemed a bit bent. Just 
possibly why it was backed out because the shape of it. Oh, you can't really see what I'm doing. I'm just rustling around in the back, backing that pin out. There we go. It's got a funny shape to it, so it only seems to locate and run in one sort of orientation, which is probably why they made the holes so m massive to stop them binding. Is that why that it's just rotating with it and then needs to come back? Maybe I've made a mistake with the new one and making it straight. <laughs> Maybe the optimum shape for a firing pin on a questionable shotgun is the shape of a rat's back leg. Right, there we go. See it moving in and out. You see that? So that one's free. That was the original back in. It's not perfect. Might have to take that out and see if I can straighten that pin. I'm assuming straight is the uh, the orientation it should be. In certain places it rattles around nicely, but sometimes it doesn't. Anyway, time for a new one. Give that oil light off. Lovely jubbly. Give that a start, make sure it's gonna wrap around here. Yeah, everything looks good there. Not a lot of space around these things. I imagine I'll be getting the, uh, following this video, I'll be getting a call from Smith & Wesson wanting to, desperate to give me a job after they've seen this true craftsmanship. This one's nice and free. So I'm guessing straight pin is the future. So I think at some point I'll I'll take the first one back out and see if I can get that pin straightened. If I 
if I can't or I break it, well, at least I know how to make a new one. Great if I could just get that in every time. I think the problem is, is the uh, the shift and adjustable spanner I'm using is a it's a metric one, um, and with this being an imperial thread, I should really be using an imperial adjustable spanner. Nearly there. Still free. Oh, it's so close. So close. Always resisting the temptation just to grab the more grips. Which everybody knows. Is the wrong tool for every job. Probably in looking at the through the pin and how far it's moving at the chamber, I would, and compared to the last one where it was seated, I would say that's probably enough. But let's just make sure it's snug down. I can't imagine I'll be taking this out again. No, that's pretty tight there. There we go. Pins in, out. I don't know if you can see that. See it moving into the chamber. Bang. Bang. That's probably how the pins got bent by trying to close the breech. Oh, the pins are out. So, all done. Um, whether it works or not, we will never know. <laughs> Why you ask? Uh, because I have no intention whatsoever of ever firing this gun. Um, nobody seems to know how old it is. I've got no idea what condition it's in, how it's been looked after, how many rounds it's had through it, how far the... Barrels have degraded, weakened the breech, everything. Um, so I've got no intention of ever, ever trying this gun. Um, I could send it away to a test house to get a check to make sure it's safe and then hire a couple of rounds through it. But that would make them an expensive two shells to do. So it's more of a showpiece, something to sit in the cupboard. If it comes to it and there's a zombie apocalypse and it's a choice between getting eaten by a zombie or my hand blown off when this explodes, I'll take the risk then. Um, but until that point, this is now going to sit in the cupboard and we shall assume that this work has been successful. Thank you very much. Uh, see you soon.